Hi, my name is Joe Cernick. I'm a member of the faculty here at Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri. And this is a show called Insight. Uh, we discuss books on politics, both domestically and internationally. Uh, today's book addresses an issue in uh, China. Sometimes we look at historical books that provide some insight on the present and sometimes broader atmospheric or trend analysis books to uh, give some insight from, uh, for political development. Uh, the book we're looking at today, as I said, is about China. It's written by Letter Hung Fincher. Uh, the title of her book is called Leftover Women, The Resurgence of Gender Inequality in China. Now, joining me on the show today are three Lindenwood University students. To my immediate right is Sierra Brown. To her right is Priscilla Adeshe Yoju. And to her right is Maria Sanchez. So I wanted to read an opening quote from the book, give you a sense of where the author is coming from, and then we'll jump into a discussion. The author writes, This book debunks the myth that women overall are faring as well as a result of China's post-socialist market reforms. The book focuses primarily on the consequences of the state media campaign regarding leftover women since 2007 and the unprecedented gender inequality in wealth created by China's urban real estate boom. Young professional women rushing into marriage too early tend to cause problems for themselves. The Chinese state media campaign regarding leftover women is related to the government's attempt to maintain social stability in the midst of widespread discontent. The leftover women campaign serves a state program to upgrade population quality by pressuring educated, high-quality women to marry and have a high-quality baby for the good of the nation. This quote really embodies just in a few words what the book is really all about. One thing that the book really focuses on and spends a really good time on is the socioeconomic stability of women before and after marriage, focusing on a few stories. It also looks at China's need to pressure women into thinking that there is their duty as to serve their state as to start families and to conform to their idea of what women should be basically conforming to society. However, it really happens once that women conform and begin this process, it really shines through the hardships of the women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty interesting that um, urban professional females are seen in such light that they kind of want to believe that they don't have to be so educated to find a man because they may probably scare the man away or it will intimidate them and they will stay mm -hmm. single for a long time. So it's, um, it's, that's where the term um, leftover women came from because um, they believe that uh, women that are from in the late 20s upwards, 30s and 40s are leftover women because no man finds them attractive or want to be with them at all. So. Um, it's been causing a lot of problem, like she said, socioeconomic problem for women as well. So, yeah, which uh, the quote here it really highlights two conventional wisdoms. Like one is this whole idea that gender inequality is, is diminishing in China, such in urban areas. Like she looks at Shanghai, Beijing, Hunan, just that gender inequality is practically non-existing. But that's not true. It's mm -hmm. still really relevant. It's still very prominent. And then the other idea that just that these leftover women that are, it's, it's really meant to be a derogative term. Mm -hmm. And yes. so they're making them think that these women are lonely, they're miserable, they're unhappy, mm -hmm. but it's really quite the opposite. It's women who are rushing into marriage that are left in a very worrisome and trouble like arena. So it's very, it's very uh, discouraging to mm -hmm. see the way they they're starting to label these women. Mm -hmm. This uh, group called the Women's Federation, so that's the government organization that's trying to push these women to marry. Yeah. And so they uh, have a lot of media campaign topics that they're uh, putting out there. And so they, uh, some of them, like the articles, would say, eight simple moves to escape the leftover women's trap, or do leftover women really deserve our sympathy? 
<laughs> and then uh, in the one sort of government propaganda article, it says, pretty women don't need a lot of education to marry a rich and powerful family, but girls with an average or ugly appearance will find it difficult. You know, it's sort of like you, the quotes she has throughout the book, yeah. it's like thinking, oh my goodness, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and this yeah. is supposed to be aimed at women that have college degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, so. It seems very just counterintuitive. Just the w this women's federation group is meant to promote and protect women's interests and rights. Yeah, it's, it's making this correlation that you know if you're a woman, you have to have a, and you're educated, you are just ugly and attractive. So they're making this association that just to guide their decision to drop out so they can feel pretty and attractive with them themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She also looks at it from a historical because the Women's mm -hmm. Federation was founded during the Communist Party mm -hmm. in 1949. So they did a lot of efforts in order to look at men and women's equality. So I think that based off of what they did back then but, and what they're doing now is they're kind of moving in the opposite direction yeah. of yeah. what they actually stand for. Yeah. yeah, one of the other terms from this Women Federation, so the article that they put out said, several men have pursued her referring to one woman and this woman was 31 years old so she was somehow perceived of as that well beyond that point mm -hmm. so therefore in danger somehow. Yeah. And so it goes on, several men have pursued her, but she's not willing to marry them because her standards are too high. If she carries on like this, she will never find a husband, you know. And so thinking, so they're, these are the articles that they're trying to use as a way of uh, encourage or manipulate women to yeah. run out there and find themselves a husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it kind of seems like they discourage women from having standards because I don't see anything wrong in having a mm. standard. If you want to go for an education, you should definitely do so. But um, like you said, the Women's Federation seemed very, very disappointing. They really disappointed women because they're supposed to empower them, but they're not doing what they, you know, are supposed to do. Like, uh, like you said, um, the one-child policy was already implemented, and they actually helped to. Um, conduct the abortions, which is wrong, because they are a women's federation, and they did these things to help, you know, promote something really bad, and you know, not in support of women. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's with that news article. It's really even doubling down on women as putting it's their fault that they're being uh, not married, not be able to marry because they're too picky and they're being wishful and willingful and they, they're having these high standards because of their education and their education is clouding their ability to see a good man and they're everywhere but they're too uh, much of a high standard so it's they're putting blame on themselves mm -hmm. for being too picky which is not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But also she goes into talking about the marriage laws in China and yeah. how that some women are getting married young and then turning around and getting sometimes divorced but almost not divorced because of certain cases mm -hmm. like marriage law in you know in China is completely different from what we have in the US whereas that you in China there's like 80% of the real estate market your the man is the one who has mm -hmm. the deed the name his name is on the deed whereas that or even the parents of the woman because there was one case where there was her friend was getting married or someone she interviewed was getting married and she said the woman owned 25 percent of the house the man owned 25 percent of the house and the parents owned a majority of the house just because if that whole divorce came into it there would still be a little bit of economic stability for the woman yeah, yeah she went through about looking at the notion of that uh, the woman may be making a lot more than the man mm -hmm. But she's the one buying the house, but then she turns it over to her husband. Mm -hmm. So now if you get a divorce, he gets everything and she gets nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, wait a minute, she bought the house. Yeah. And, but somehow or other, and even the uh, parents of some of the women, they're going to buy the house or help to buy the house, but not put it in her name, but put it into his name, mm -hmm. even though you're talking about, they had figures here for some of the cities mm -hmm. where the divorce rate is as high as 50%. Yeah. So that, you know, if you're looking at figures like that, you're thinking, well, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. And, and also you're really thinking about the whole idea of in 2011, there was a court case that went on and the woman had actually kept 
receipts and everything so that she was able to go in and prove it. And that's the whole deal she was alluding to, the whole marriage law. If there's no paper trail or if there's no record of things mm -hmm. that are in the woman's name showing that she has had that, there's no security for her. And it just shows how they are making them in a position to be dependent on their mm -hmm. husbands because they have to go through this long, extensive research, gathering all the receipts mm -hmm. and such to make them discouraged not to divorce because it's very costly. And she mentions one specific, specific case uh, with Wu Mei mm -hmm. uh, saying how she was able to divorce because she can afford to. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these women don't because they end up losing their jobs or not really unless they're losing. They give mm -hmm. up their jobs to rush into marriage and then they sign over their economic uh, stability to mm -hmm. the man, to, to husband. And so they are in a position where they can't afford because they're dependent and their most valuable asset, asset is, their, is their house. Mm -hmm. So, th so yeah. they're, they're just left in a position to just stay in some abusive relationships yeah. or just yeah. deal with it. Yeah, many of these women actually want to divorce their husbands, mm. but they don't want to as well because yeah. they have nowhere to go since the name is, the house mm -hmm. is in the man's name. So they feel like I have nowhere to go, so I'll just stay in this marriage anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's not something they actually really want to do. Unlike the lady that was rich, that had money, and mm -hmm. she could divorce her husband. Yeah, but she still lost somewhere. everything. Yeah. She, lost she still lost everything. And still anyway. had to compensate her husband as really well. Sad. So it really, yeah. The uh, problem seems to be because of China's one child policy. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, what they're saying is that for, and he, she says there's some exceptions and they've made some modifications, but for the most part, you're still telling people you can only have one child. Well, as a result, if they know in advance that the uh, child will be a girl, they will be aborting that so they can have a boy. And so as a result in the United States, when you look at the uh, ratio of uh, boys to girls or men to women, you're talking about 101 women or girls to 100 men or boys. So it's mm -hmm. somewhat balanced. But mm -hmm. in China, she says the ratio is 121 men to 100 women. So you mm -hmm. have this very high percentage of men because they go on and say, he says here, in the long run, the inability of surplus men to have a spouse and a child poses a problem for how they will take care of themselves and their parents in the future. So that you are forcing women to try to get married to make sure that you're, if you have, they don't, you're even going to have a bigger surplus mm -hmm. of yeah. men who will never find a mate. See, what's really interesting about that is leftover women doesn't really exist. It's really that men that are leftover is mm -hmm. what's existing. You see this sure. imbalanced ratio, but yet they're putting the pressure on women to mm -hmm. rush into marriage and make them believe that. And it goes back to with believing this myth that mm -hmm. it was created by the government to uh, promote marriage and plant population and sustain social and economic stability, but it's placed on women. So you see how powerful their message is and in indicating through all these um, agencies like the Xinhua News, mm -hmm. which is an official mm -hmm. funded uh, program by the government and then the Women's Federation as well. And you see how powerful their message is because mm -hmm. it's not only the women believing themselves, it's, it's putting it all across the culture of parents and, their, and men uh, constantly reminding these women that, hey, you're being left over, you're mm -hmm. passing your 25s, and you're, you're not really successful despite other successes they may have. Mm -hmm. Like marriage is such a huge indicator of success, and it's constantly being reminded on them that they're not married, so they're just by default unsuccessful in society. Mm -hmm. Now, she was saying, okay, you had this 1950 marriage law, mm -hmm. which gave women rights and that somehow everything changes in 2011. Mm -hmm. So now you have a court case in the Supreme Court in uh, China, and suddenly the way that law is interpreted now mm -hmm. is it's the man gets everything. Mm -hmm. So here she's writing a book, 2016 this book comes out. That law was 2011. You gotta assume that she, uh, the book is probably up to then about 2014 if you mm -hmm. have a 2016 copyright date on it. So in other words, she's only writing for the first three years after the law goes into effect. So mm -hmm. sure. you start looking at this and wondering, wow, you know, four or five more years down the road, you're going to look at a lot of very well-educated women who were being severely shafted, economically speaking. Yeah. I grew up in Beijing, so I understand kind of where she's coming from because you do have cases where women are highly educated, but because of their aging population in the states, 
uses media and propaganda to employ mm -hmm. these changes, this conformity, you do have women stepping, you know, they might be at the height of their career at 27 and you do have them backing out and saying, okay, well now I need to, you know, serve my, you know, this is me serving my country, me adding to the population instead of going, because the way, you know, China's going right now, it's more of an aging population. So now that they've implemented the two child policy, where couples who were products of the one child policy now can have two children, they're moving towards in that direction. <laughs> She had uh, quotes again. I uh, some of these uh, women marrying late shouldn't blindly let late become never. Or mm -hmm. other quotes in waiting for true love to appear, women squander their precious youth. Their standards for their careers and their partners are so high. By the time they want to marry, they discover that almost all the men who are their equal in education and age are already married. You know, and you're sitting there and you're thinking, "Wow, that this stuff is." having an impact yes. on women reading mm -hmm. this yes. uh, rather than it sounds like some true romance novel that you should just sort of mm -hmm. read and realize uh, and hold it and put it no. aside instead. It's, it's she, all in the media, yeah. yes. It's right. all in the media. The media tries to make the women believe that this term is actually true when it's not. So mm -hmm. they kind of hear it here and there on the internet and websites and in the news and everything. So they believe that, yes, I think I'm actually a leftover woman because it's, it seems like it's something everyone knows about. So mm -hmm. it's just in the media. The media tries to spread this word to, let, um, to promote marriage. Well, this media being it. it's government owned. Yes, so it gov yes media, exactly. It's yes, it's the, the government. Media. It's, exactly. It's government propaganda. Yes. She says, my research over two and a half years indicates that the state media campaign about leftover women has had a powerful effect on many urban Chinese women in their 20s and early 30s. The stigma surrounding leftover women intensifies pressures on women in their mid to late 20s to rush into marriage with the wrong man. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, basically... Yeah, yeah it's with the, with the news media having so much power, they're putting out statistics and sources that even she was researching, trying to find the origins that mm -hmm. there's no really a uh, source yes. where they're getting, they're just putting out things. So they, yeah. the agency could have been making up these numbers to make these women believe that, wow, this is, because it's coming, coming from a government, we see it as just a reliable and just valid, because mm -hmm. it's our government. And, but yet they're not really putting out their methodology or nothing of where they got mm -hmm. these statistics. And so the women just are believing it just because it comes from the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she questions a number of mm -hmm. their uh, data points yeah. mm -hmm. and just sort of feels they're making stuff up to yeah. support what they want to say, exactly. but they have absolutely no research or there's nothing valid behind mm -hmm. it. Just throw it out there. You know, yeah. this thing, many highly educated leftover women are very progressive in their thinking and enjoy going to nightclubs in search of a one-night stand or they become the mistress of a high official or a rich man, you know, and it's like, and so she writes this and says, just made up, you know, mm -hmm. make, say it, and it's thrown yeah. out there. Yeah, and what's really interesting, too, is that she states how the Chinese government actually wants these high educated women to marry because mm -hmm. of their high superior genetic, mm -hmm. yet they're the ones like terrorizing and diminishing their, their status, so it's very strange to see how uh, they promote that tactic to mm -hmm. have them marry, but they want them to marry. Mm -hmm. So it's very yeah, strange. It's like they want them and they do not want them yeah. as well. So they want them to have babies. They're She's smart. Her they feeling, don't want them. and what I thought was interesting, she goes, leftover women tend to be educated, leftover men tend to be uneducated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that she drew big contrast between how you look at the two sort of categories. Mm -hmm. But also you have to think about how China, they tend to push education upon their people now for women for them basically when she says that okay if you're ugly you have to be highly educated to be therefore attractive mm -hmm. for a man so most people and most parents would push education in order to give them a little bit of an extra boost maybe hoping that they'll go on that marriage outlet versus maybe pursuing yeah. a higher education or possibly you know going abroad and teaching or yeah. you know it's very thought-provoking in that sense because we see when we see women at least here in the USA going for education mm -hmm. it's very motivating very encouraging and we mm -hmm. celebrate that mm -hmm. 
and we see nothing wrong with them delaying marriage just for a few yeah. years until they get their bachelor's or MD or PhD. Mm -hmm. And who here in China, we see them ob 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 obtaining education. We're like, hold on, hold yeah. on. Like, why don't you marry first, and then yeah. we'll, we'll consider yeah. something else. But it's, it's also one of those thoughts that is women's higher education making men feel insecure? And that's, that's one of those deals where are we trying to bolster men and put them on a pedestal and that's kind of what they're doing in China is they put yes. men on a pedestal and they're you know women have to therefore conform to their ideas and their ideologies and their beliefs yeah. so that they're in order attractive so that they'll be married yeah, yeah. it also goes to with uh, what you said was they're putting men in this like pedestal making them feel better and they do that so with they are seeing women excel in college mm -hmm. they're making their their test scores have to be higher for them to enter college and they still do that yet like it's still very uh, what is, that's what gender diminishing gender inequality mm -hmm. is but yet we're bearing them with other obstacles let's make their test scores high for them to not get into college mm -hmm. as much yes it seems very evident because the leftover men are not so educated mm -hmm. but the leftover women are very educated mm -hmm. so they feel kind of like insecure mm -hmm. that's and why it, and she's trying to show that the women in universities are performing a lot better than the men in the yes. universities mm -hmm which then leads to this odd thing where they don't like uh, apparently the organizations that want leftover women marrying mm -hmm. yes. then end up putting out a lot of political cartoons that ridicule women mm -hmm. for putting down men and so then you have these political cartoons about the notion of well you're too educated and you're making the guy yeah. feel inferior and mm -hmm. you're thinking well this is what they're putting out there yeah. And they're actually making sure that it's as overt as that. We're going to emphasize that message. Mm -hmm. So somehow yes. you should make yourself feel stupid, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to make the guy feel weird. But mm -hmm. she says that then there's problems because why you're having such a high divorce rate is these guys are cheating on their wives. Mm -hmm. And she's concerned and she can't quite put her figure on it. But she thinks there's a lot of spousal abuse going on, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, typically the t cases that she talked about were abuse of the relationship but also you had a lot of in she mentioned infidelity she mm -hmm. started talking about how husbands would have another girlfriend just because there were there was that rush into marriage at mm -hmm. such a young age yeah and it, she uh she mentioned that the blame is still put on women that <laughs> Your yeah. reason your husband cheated was because you were not good enough so you yeah. have to change your behaviors and there's a Articles that the Xinhua News or other agencies promote that it's you need it. There's there's workshops here for how to be a better wife mm -hmm. Instead of having it towards the husband who was the one that cheated yeah. yeah, and now women that actually got divorced and have a child are now regarded left of a woman yeah. as mm -hmm. well, so yeah. I, And you get the feeling then that since they're putting the pressure on the woman mm -hmm. Everything is you you've got to marry then how you're raising boys to men to mm -hmm. subsequently men. well I didn't do anything wrong it's always you we already knew because that's what I've been told since I've been mm -hmm. raised mm -hmm. which creates my guess some of their problem here yes. because then you're not sort of having sort of an equal exchange of ideas mm -hmm. and saying well let's work things out and so it's very high divorce rates when you're looking at these some of these stats as they're really quite high and mm -hmm. uh, she's even concerned that because she's getting some of those data from the government they're mm -hmm. probably wrong anyway yeah I think that basically from what you know you were talking about with the divorce rates and such I think that maybe it's a bit skewed but from what we've seen throughout the the interviews and such there you know there might be indication where infidelity and divorce rate obviously play hand in hand but maybe also considering that the woman might be you know financially stable to mm. leave therefore she feels like mm -hmm. she can raise her child yeah and a lot of these women like as previously said can't afford to just divorce because these women ha had a job prior to marrying mm -hmm. and then they end up leaving that job but then mm -hmm. they don't have that or their skill is not as valuable as they were before mm -hmm. because they're now they have a kid and they have a responsibility to raise this kid but because they're stigmatized around that women are not as committed mm -hmm. as yeah. they were prior to marriage and yeah. prior to kids so 
they're not able to obtain a, a stable income to be able to afford divorce and to be on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if they did actually get a divorce, the marriage laws are still not in their favor. Yeah. yeah. Because the new laws say that um, if a woman and a man are still in disagreements, they should share the properties um, with in whoever name mm -hmm. it is, which obviously is the man. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they still don't have a home anyway. The, uh, she was pointing out that what she saw developing as a result of this is there's a decline in women in the workforce in urban areas, but not in the rural areas. So that now you're having more women work in the rural areas, but there's going down in the urban areas. So she's wondering how that's going to have an impact on China uh, going down the road. And so she goes that the climate in urban women's labor participation looks even worse if you're going back to the 1970s where you had 90 percent working. Now she thinks it's down to 50 percent. So she's wondering how this is going to have an impact yeah. on women. This goes in the on future. to again debunking this gender uh, inequality myth that she is trying to re reiterate here is that this because urban women are losing their jobs and that automatically just makes them have less income because mm -hmm. they're either relying on their husband or have no job or have a lower a status job that is it's bridging the gap of gender inequality here and she's mm -hmm. trying to promote that we have these women losing their jobs and it's mm -hmm. having effects on their income and it's making them dependent on their husband and their husband so it is they're here again debunking this gender inequality mm -hmm. we only have a few minutes left what did you uh, think of this book and um, do you recommend that people watching the show uh, read it I really enjoy reading this book. It had a lot of insight into the issues and the hardships that women have. Mm -hmm. And also the interviews were very touching because she gets real personal and they explain their story. But also if you don't know much about China, this also kind of gives you a little bit more insight into what they're dealing with currently. For me, it wasn't really shocking because I'm from Nigeria and it's almost the same thing because you get pressurized when you reach a certain age to get married. But something I find interesting is there were no interviews with men in the book. I would have um, preferred to um, listen to a man's you know, past pers perspective from this. So. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen that. You know, uh, yes. I was looking for that too. Yeah. So I think I guess just a general U.S. Uh, woman, uh, woman general women in the US, mm -hmm. it brought upon a lot of realizations mm -hmm. and just I really recommend to specifically women obtaining college just to see yeah. how different our situations are and how it is we still do feel pressure here in the US mm -hmm. but just putting ourselves in perspective and seeing how other women in college uh, do that so and just also just digging because I even found myself questioning um, programs and organizations here in the government that supposedly promote women's interests yeah. and rights so mm -hmm. I did a lot of digging of that, so I really do uh, highly recommend it to um, women in similar demographics. Mm -hmm. She had a quote in here from one woman about how you're dropping out of the workforce. and says, my most important duty is to find a good man to marry, and how do you do that? By dropping out of the workforce. So I'm, you know, I'm reading that and I'm thinking, okay, they dropped out, so I guess they're living with their parents because they can't afford mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. live on their own, mm -hmm. but that as a result now, you're somehow <laughs> going to become dependent on the man who's but wants your money to buy the house yeah. and she seems to see it's quite high as far as the number that do that so um, yeah this is a good interesting book that sees uh, problems ahead so uh, we all recommend it and thank you for joining us today